Hello, I'm Dr. Ivan Schwarzman. I'm a urologist with special dedication for BPH, and I work at Fundació Puigvert in Barcelona, Spain. And I want to talk to you about morselation and how the, to find the perfect morselator for you, if you're looking for one. Opinions, of course, are my own in this presentation. I'm going to talk to you about some morselation basics, and I'm going to do an evaluation of the available morselators in mm -hmm. Europe. So let's start with morselator basics. The composition of a morselator is quite complex. Morselators are composed of many different pieces, but most of them vary in one of two things, in the blades and the suction system. The blades can be oscillating, moving from one side to the other, or reciprocating, moving from um, the front to, to the back. And the suction mechanism can be one of three mainly, one is a vacuum generator, the other one is a peristaltic pump, and the third potential one is to connect the morselator to the, uh, the suction in the OR. I really don't recommend this option because it's rarely strong enough to perform good morselation. So basically two, vacuum pump or peristaltic pump, vacuum generator or peristaltic pump. And I'm going to talk to you about the, the available morselators in Europe. These are the six available mosolators in Europe, mainly in the market right now. We can divide them in two, in the classic mosolators and the new mosolators. And I'm going to perform an individual evaluation on each one of them based on a bit of my experience and the available um, scientific evidence on them regarding especially efficiency, grams per minute of mosolation, bladder wall injury rates, malfunction of the devices, and a, a attempt to evaluate also the price. And I, and I put all this information in this in this table we'll, that will be available for you in the video notes. Let's start from the beginning. The first available mosolator was the VersaCut, developed by Lumenis, now owned by Moston Mors Scientific. It is the only uh, mosolator that exists now with reciprocating blades. The outside is and the inside is sharp. And this is the VersaCut mosolator. This is the first mosolator, mosolator I tried. One of the problems with this oscillator is that since the blades are moving inside, it's difficult to see exactly where it is. And if you get too close to the bladder wall, you can you can potentially injure them. And that's what we observe in this in, in the available evidence. Very useful study, this one by France and colleagues, the systematic review on oscillators. It showed it it um showed that there are 17 studies, almost 3,000 patients on the VersaCut with a median efficiency of a bit under 4 grams per minute, a bladder wall injury rate above 5%, and a very low device malfunction rate at less than 1%. We see here this bladder wall injury rate a bit high, probably because of this oscillating, of this reciprocating movement of the blades. And regarding the price, is this one of the cheapest oscillators available? Second available oscillator was a piranha from Richard Wolf. The outside is sharp, the inside is rough. This is the piranha functioning. This is one of the two oscillators we currently have in my hospital. It's a very efficient, very safe oscillator. I really, I really like it. Oscillating blades and a vacuum generator for the uh, suction. At the beginning, we had a bit of problem with the, with the vacuum generator. We really don't have these problems anymore, but we develop a, a, a set of tips and tricks to use this oscillator. We will improve the seal on the tissue trap. We would cut a bit of the tubing. We make it tubing shorter, so the vacuum would be more efficient. And it's very important to make sure that this, this rubber ring is correctly positioned inside the handpiece. It can become dislodged, during, especially during, during sterilization and you have to reposition it. If it's not in place like this, this is a correct position, it will not work properly. Also, the recommended position of the blades is 50% open. This also improves efficiency a little bit. So what evidence do we have? Also a lot of evidence on this morselator, 13 studies, more than 2,500 patients, median efficiency rate higher than the VersaCut at 5.3 grams per minute, bladder wall injury rate much lower at 1.2%, and a device malfunction rate a bit higher at a bit over 2%. And of course, the price of this oscillator is much more expensive than the, than the VersaCut is in the higher range of price. There are some studies comparing two oscillators head-to-head, -head, VersaCut and Piranha. 
articles. These are the ones with vote evidence. There are five studies, five head-to-head -head comparisons. Two of them so, so show um, similar efficiency between them, and three show that the piranha is more efficient. I personally agree with the piranha being more efficient, and also the piranha has less, less auxiliary procedures. The third morselator I'm going to talk about, and this is one of the first one of the new morselators, is a drill cut developed by Carl Storz, rough inside and outside. It is an, also an oscillating uh, morselator with a vacuum generator, so very similar functioning to the to the piranha. The blades are very different, but the 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 rest of the movement is is quite similar. And now the available evidence drops dramatically. Only two studies available for the drill cut. The median efficiency is very similar to the one observed in the piranha. Rather, wall injury rate also very similar, a bit over the 2.1% of the piranha. But, and this stands out for this most later, the device malfunction rate very high, very high at almost 8%. It's also on the higher end of the price range. And one of the most interesting new morselators is definitely the, the multicut, the multicut solo. It can be attached to the general laser or by its own, it then is known as a multicut solo. It has a very nice interface. You can um, modify the oscillation and modify the aspiration as well. This will be why this is, is useful. And this is especially useful when you are trying to morselate a very hard uh, piece of adenoma. You have to lower the speed of the blades a lot. And when you do that, then the, more, the, the oscillating movement can, can become stuck. And if you take away the, more, the oscillation, it just spins in one direction and it's less um, easy for the adenoma to get stuck. So the outset is rough on the blades, the inset is sharp. It also has a more, an oscillation. This is a multicut solo functioning. It has a very high speed of, of blade movement. It is oscillating as every, every, every oscillator we've seen except the VersaCut, but it has a peristaltic pump like the VersaCut. So no vacuum generator. And this makes the suction mechanism not as strong, let's say. There are some tips for improving this, this um, suction to improving a little bit. What we do is we morselate standing up. So we have the gravity helping us with uh, the water falling from the from a higher position of the patient we compared to the, the device and then to the to the drainage and to having a very good position not too far away from the bladder wall to avoid a very sharp angle between the handpiece, the hand, the blades of the morselator and the adenoma. There are currently no published head-to-head -head comparisons. There's no published evidence regarding the multicut, but it will be soon because we perform head-to-head uh, -head comparison between Multicat and Piranha in a prospective randomized single center study at Fundacio Puchuet in 137 patients. This is pending publication. I hope this will be published soon. And to our surprise, the Multicat was a new morselator. Everyone talked about it, but the Piranha in our study is still more efficient globally. And this efficiency is more pronounced in the bigger prostates and less pronounced, sorry, more pronounced in the smaller prostates and less pronounced in the bigger prostates. This might has, have to do with the fact that we have a two liter reservoir canister for the, for the liquid, for the piranha. So we have to change it when we have bigger prostates more often and this can slow down the process. We also observed a higher bladder wall injury rate in the multicut compared to the piranha and a lower malfunction rate. This is probably due to the peristaltic pump. It's a simpler mechanism for suction and it, it gets uh, jammed. It presents problems less often. So it's less powerful, but it works. It, it doesn't get, uh, it doesn't break that often. Might be a little bit um, cheaper because you can reuse the blades. So might be a little bit cheaper in this regard, but it's not really uh, a very cheap oscillator. One of the two last oscillators I want to talk about is the JAWS, developed by, by the Hawk company. This is a Chinese company. This is a um, oscillator very similar in function to the, to the Piranha also, oscillating blades and, and a vacuum generation generator. There is some evidence available for this morselator, but not a lot. The first study by, by he and colleagues is not a study directed to morselation, but to enucleation in general. And they report a little bit their efficiency with the Hawk morselator. 
And the other study available is by Ibal and colleagues and is published in the not indexed uh, journal. So two studies, median efficiency rate C, uh, similar to Piranha, bladder wall injury rate is 0% of device malfunction, 0%. But with not great uh, level of evidence, it's also on the higher end of the price range. Of course, prices can vary dramatically between um, countries and between hospitals, and you have to negotiate the price for your wall. So this is just, of course, a guide. And the last one I want to talk to you about is a cyberblade from the Quanta Systems. This is this should get a prize for design innovation. This one is a purely innovative um, design. Everything is controlling the handpiece. The outside is sharp. The inside is rough. No pedal for this mosolator. Only you can you only need to connect the vacuum pump to of course drain the liquid and the and the uh, prosthetic uh, uh, tissue. So this is a, the cyber blade in functioning. This is how you increase or decrease the speed of the blades. This is how you activate them. This level activates the vacuum. I would define it as slow but steady with emphasis in slow. Only based on my personal experience, I've tried it a couple of times, not a lot of experience, but in my opinion, it is the, the, the slowest morselation, morselator. The evidence on this morselator is sadly lacking. Let's hope. I think this is going to change in the future. There's an Italian group about to publish their experience with Cyberblade, and this will probably change uh, soon. This is probably a good morselator for a low volume practice or to have as a backup morselator is cheaper but it's probably the slowest. So very little evidence, very little to put here at this table. So we put all the data in this table and of course there's a huge variation of the available evidence, basically following the the, the, the direction of this arrow, the Versocata and the Piranha have, have a lot of available um, evidence, the rest of the mosolators have very little. So it's better to change the exact numbers to some categories regarding efficiency, bladder wall, injury rate, and malfunction. Probably the slowest are the Versacat and the Cyberblade. All the others might have similar efficiencies. We observed that the Pirani, in our experience, the Pirani is a little bit better, but with no huge differences. Regarding bladder wall injury rate, probably the Versacat is the, the worst, the highest, with the highest bladder wall injury rate. And regarding device malfunction, with the available evidence, probably the drill cut is the worst one. And now, of course, you can be with this information, you're ready to go to Amazon or wherever you shop for mosolators and buy your mosolator and start happily mosolating and nucleating in your hospital. But a word of warning, if you have learned something from, from Titanic, it's not only that two people could have fit perfectly in that, in that um, door, but that sometimes the builders of a device, the producers of a, the company that develops a machine tells us that it's, it's going to work fine, it's never going to break. Remember what they said about the Titanic, God himself could not sink this ship. And of course, God could, and an iceberg as well could sink this ship. So the morselator is a machine, you can expect that it will malfunction, it will break. So I will add one category to this to this chart that is after sales service. And of course you can have, uh, you will have to fill this yourself considering that relationship you have with the different companies offering, offering the, the, the different morselators. So I wanna finish with some quick take home messages. When evaluating a morselator, consider efficiency, safety, reliability, price, but also after sales service. And to put the classic morselators compared to the new ones in one slide, this would probably be it, except for the for the Quanta Cyberblade. All uh, new morselators are based on the Piranha design, really, just to mention that. There hasn't been a true revolution in morselators. We hope there is one soon because morselation is something that we um, endoscopic and nucleators are not a big fans of. It's bit dangerous, it's a bit too slow. So well, let's hope this improve in the future. Of course, the new mosolators are very based on the Piranha design, but having said that, it is good to have competition, it's good to have options in the market. It makes the, the market more dynamic and it probably benefits both patients and surgeons. 
And this is it. Thank you very much for your attention. Thanks again to for um, for the invitation to participate. Thank you, Dr. Gomez Sanchez. It was uh, a privilege being able to talk to all, to all of you.